Hey everyone, we're back with a quick test. So this was just a curiosity on my part, but it's a question we ask with pretty much every generation of either PCIe or video card architecture, and that is, what is the impact of PCIe lanes on video card performance? So in this case, we're specifically looking at uh, this GTX 1080, just because it's the fastest performing single card we have right now. And we put this into an X8 slot PCIe Gen 3, and an X16 slot PCIe Gen 3. The way to do this, this test is actually very easy to set up. So first of all, uh, the board we used is one of these X99 classified boards. And it's actually, all of these are hardwired for 16. If you look into the actual slot, you'll see that they are wired for 16 lanes, but they don't all actually produce uh, 16 lanes worth of performance on these cards. And so EVGA has a manual for this board that does say specifically which slots to use for your video card configuration. I use the ones you're not supposed to uh, because we were trying to see how does X8 perform. So that's how we set it up. You can go into BIOS as well and validate these settings. So in BIOS, uh, in the top slot on this particular board, it will push electrically 16 lanes and it tells you that in BIOS. If we move down to the second slot, which you really don't want to use, uh, for any reason other than something like an ancillary device like a PCIe SSD. If you move to that slot, you'll see that it does push eight lanes, not 16. And that's easy to validate through BIOS and through software and Windows and things like that. So that's the setup. The reason you would run by eight lanes, I, I'm not too sure. Maybe you're putting one of these into a Z97 or a Z170 board or something older-ish uh, that is more lane limited than X99, but that would really be the only use case. It's still worth testing though. Always curious about the impact of it. And it does give us some future sight to PCIe Gen 4 and things like that. So uh, let's just jump into the results. This one's pretty easy and straightforward. First of all, Metro Last Light at 1440p with a very high and high settings and tessellation. The PCIe Gen 3 by 16 lane assignment pushed 96 average, 74 1% lows, and 70.3 0.1% lows compared against the by 8 assignments, 95, 73.3, and 67. So uh, the difference between the averages is 1.05% negligible but measurable. And the difference between the 1% lows is 0.95%. So basically, there is a 1% difference in this game between an 8-lane assignment, PCIe Gen 3, and a 16-lane assignment for this particular game. Before moving on further, uh, that would mean really you have nothing to worry about if you're concerned over whether to put your high-end GPU into a 16 or 8-lane slot, if you're choking on lanes somewhere else like SSDs, uh, which really should be pulling from the chipset anyway, but you get the idea. If that is a concern, don't worry about it because it's 1% difference. But let's move on to the next game. The next game is Mordor, Shadow of Mordor. And at 1440, we're seeing 108 average versus 107 average with eight lanes, half the lanes, you lose one FPS. And then a 60.7 for both 1% lows and a very slightly reduced 0.1% low metric. So the average difference, uh, average FPS, difference between 16 and 8 lanes is 0.93%, again, about 1% total between the two, and that's consistent with Metro Last Light. At 4K for Shadow of Mordor, we see about the same thing. The average FPS gap is 0.7 between, so that's X16 is 64, X8 is 63.3, and that's a 1.1% difference. So negligible, measurable, but not something you'd ever perceive as a user. Black Ops 3, 1440p, we see the same average FPS. We see a 2.46% difference in 1% lows, and we see the same, more or less, 0.1% lows. And moving on to 4K, it's a gap of uh, X16s at 71.3, X8s at 70.7, and that is a 0.85% difference between the averages, again, around 1%, and the 1% lows shows a 1.05% gap with the 57.3 versus 56.7. Moving on to GTA 5 at 4K with very high and ultra settings effectively maxed out with going, without going to advanced graphics. The by 16 setup is 58.3, by 8 is 58 FPS average, and 1% lows are 44.7 versus 45.3. And that gives us a difference of 0.52% between the averages. 
and 1.33% between the 1% low metrics. Ashes of singularities on screen now, but you'll see that it's basically the same thing. This was just to show it with DX12, but again, performance is effectively equivalent. So even with a high-end GPU, the, the best performing single GPU we currently have, we're not seeing a difference between 16 lanes and eight lanes. Maybe if we had something like uh, that R9 390 Devil dual GPU single card setup, maybe then we would see a difference. I don't have one of those on hand, but we'll try and figure something like that out. As far as a single GPU setup, meaning one card, one GPU, uh, there is effectively no difference, 1% difference between 16 lanes and eight lanes. And uh, that's really all there is to it. If you're doing SLI or something, obviously that's a bit different because of the way scaling works, the way the bridge works. We'll look at that separately. But for now, don't worry about the difference between X8 and X16 when you're pairing up your GPU with the motherboard, especially if you're using a lower end card than one of these, which is supposed to be $720. But if you buy it today, it's 1100 and is a terrible deal. So unless you're using what is effectively an $1100 video card right now, despite the MSRP, uh, well, actually, even then, you have nothing to worry about. So that's all for this test. It's the same. It's the way it's been for the past few generations. I would imagine the interface, which is PCIe, will continue to push the bandwidth beyond what these GPUs can actually really utilize in a sense that chokes the performance in games noticeably. It's been that way for 10 years or more now, and it will probably continue to be that way for some time. So as always, Patreon link the post troll video if you liked this random exploration of a curiosity. We'll have more content for you as always coming up shortly this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.